Hello, Gemma. Hello, Kelly. Hi. Good morning. It's lovely to have you both here. Oh, my gosh. When I think I, we had Kim Chandler on the other day and um, talking about our vocal tech days. And actually, that's where I met the both of you. Yeah, all those right. years ago. Oh, my God, all those years ago. And when I think about it, um, a week out of that, we had all these bands. I had Is It, Is it You, which was like a rock band. You know, Gemma yeah. actually had the Jones band. Yeah. <laughs> and Kelly. Very long ago. <laughs> And it was just such an eclectic group of people that just wrote music together and made sounds. And we were so lucky to have been in that group, weren't we? A hundred percent. Even like being at Tech, well, what it was that then it was called Tech. It's been London now, but being yeah. there at that time, it was it was the very start of contemporary music schools, isn't it, Kel? So I think yeah. we were in a real melting pot of just creativity people i found vocal tech from the metro newspaper really? yeah i remember it so clearly i literally read an article a, a journalist had come to the school for the day and yeah. i was like where is this school where is it <laughs> i've done my degree where's this school and i had to come to the open day from it was the metro newspaper where i found that place oh yeah. my god that's so funny because mm. um, i had just been told that i would never sing opera and I should go and sing jazz. So I was like, well, where can I go and find them? <laughs> <laughs> so I came up with the vocal mm. thing. Do you know what? I was on a chat forum, some random chat forum. Um, and I was auditioning at the time for loads of different musical theatre colleges. Yeah. And somebody yeah. mentioned vocal tech. And I was like, what is that? Vocal yeah. tech. And then I like Googled it and found the website, went along to an open day. And I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> This has yeah. blown my mind, like oh, my contemporary God. music live, like. Mm. Oh my God, it's 9.01, <laughs> it's time to start. Hello, hello, lovely people. Hello, Laurie Barker there. Hi, I am Nadine Benjamin, and I am the intuitive Verdi Soprano. I'm a certified NLP mind coach. I'm a certified high performance coach. I'm a healer, and I'm also a professional opera singer who loves singing all over the world. And one of my greatest passions is connecting, championing, and celebrating people. And today, oh my God, I've got <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful songbirds. I love Yay. you. I love you. This morning, Gemma Knight Jones and Kelly Fraser are professional singers with over 10 years experience in the music industry, theatre, TV and film and in education. Gemma is a West End performer with credits including The Lion King and the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. In her name, Kelly works extensively in the industry as a vocal coach on shows Ooh. such as X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. She's a principal lecturer at Contemporary Music School, BIM, London, and is currently studying a master's in music therapy. Well done. Thank you so much for you being here. You're welcome. Good morning, Tina. Good morning, Susan. So lovely to have you. So lovely to have you here. So as I normally say, Gemma, who's up top there, and Kelly, who's down below there, none of us, neither of us, any of us. Actually, I wonder if I can put your your little um, our names on. I'll, I'll have a look and see if I, I can show them, because that might be better if I can do that. But it might not show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's a bit professional. <laughs> There we go. And then we can share everybody. So at least everybody can see who you are. None of us are medics or uh, GPs. Please, 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 Ellen, lovely to see you. Hello, uh, Um, We've got A-level revision uh, there. Hello to you. And we've got Ruthie. Good morning to you. Oh, so ladies, it's just so wonderful to have you in one of these live chat sessions. Oh, thank you for having us, Nads. Thank not, you. Not it's so great to see you. You're incredible women. So tell us individually a little bit about, you know, 
how you evolved in this kind of how you started with singing and you know how this kind of came into your world Kelly I think I, I very much feel that singing chose me really in lots of ways I sort of look back now and think that I, I never questioned a career as a singer it was I think that I was I was only going to do which is really odd looking back now I don't know where I had that kind of narrow focus from such a young age but it was literally something I always did as a kid annoying everyone at home singing I think I started singing lessons when I was 12 just to get out of my house and stop annoying everyone for an hour a week and go and sing somewhere else mm -hmm. and I'd pretty much done everything that I could do in Kent which is where I live and I still live in Kent now and I sort of got to 17 18 and knew that if I really wanted to to make a career of, of singing, I needed to come up to London. And that's that was kind of the beginning of my, I guess my professional journey starting really. And I went to vocal tech and studied, I did a diploma for a year and then loved it so much that I carried on to do my three year undergraduate course. And throughout that time, like, like we just said, it was just such a melting pot that was so, connected to the industry it wasn't like you sort of went off into this little university land for three years and then came back into the real world at the end of it and thought what am I going to do it was like our tutors were booking us on gigs I think Kim Chandler like my first ever professional gig was with Gemma and a group of us doing backing vocals for Rick Astley weren't you on that it was just there you were just so fortunate to just be you know just around people in the industry working that just wanted to offer a helping hand to get you in the industry and I think that has literally just been how my career has evolved over the past sort of 10-15 years I've just kind of been given opportunities opportunities really gracefully from tutors and and then friends and then I myself now have wanted to do exactly the same thing for young people that I'm working mm. with and and yeah so that my career just really did evolve from that point and has been a sort of real marriage of performance work myself I was in my 20s I was doing a lot of kind of function work and corporate work um backing vocal work and then sort of really got into arranging I sort of my songwriting was very I had a very brief love affair with songwriting <laughs> which then evolved into a love of arranging and I kind of really got into choirs and running and leading choirs mm -hmm. um and teaching and and that was yeah sort of it all just happened really just yeah. very fortunately <laughs> oh, bless. and what about you Gemma yeah, so probably very similar to Kel. I've I've always um, performed, and I suppose for me, I did. I started at sort of you know a part time weekend dance school, doing dancing and singing and a little bit of drama. Um, and I was a child that was into quite a lot of things when I was younger, I think. But as I begun to get older, everything sort of started to fall off. All the you know karate fell off, gymnastics fell off. <laughs> all the other bits and pieces ice skating like we did everything mum and dad were very good at you know getting us involved in lots um yeah. everything fell off and the performing stayed um so I did my a levels that was drama and then I went to I went to and did my degree straight away at 21 yeah. and did it in media and performance but the performance aspect of it was still quite strong within that degree so I but kind of a little bit of a topsy-turvy way I found vocal tech after doing a degree but like I said I was so buzzing about finding this contemporary music school that I was I've got to go I know I've got a higher qualification as it now but I wasn't at all seeing it from a qualification point of view it was merely um purely to meet people to be studying contemporary music which was just mind-blowing at that time what would be 2004 yeah, uh, 2004. yeah, 2004. Yeah. Um, and so had to go and did go. And yeah, one of the best years of my life from a learning point of view. Like Kelly said, it was it was such a place of you just were you just felt so excited to just be a part of this really new thing. And it was just so exciting every day, I think, to go into that tiny little cottage with no room and no <laughs> hard, often not even a proper classroom to sit in. At, at <laughs> On some really rough estate. Yeah, right. But yet still, it felt just the most amazing place to be. 
Um, but alongside that as well, I've always had a love for theatre. My mum used to take us to the theatre a lot of the time. Like I said, I went to kind of performing arts and drama schools. My drama A-level teacher was an absolute inspiration to me. Um, a man that I, I only, I think I believe I can do what I do because, uh, very much because of him. He was such a good teacher and so encouraging of us at such a young age that I only knew it was possible to have a career in the arts maybe after doing my, my A-level and smashed my A-level and got an A in drama. And that was 100% because of him. Uh, so the, <laughs> the, I think the sort of theatre bit of it was, was very much down to Mr. Lord, um, who I still keep in contact with now and still comes to watch me do anything that I'm in. He's there with his wife to come and watch, which is just so lovely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of, after doing vocal tech, I've sort of found my way back to theatre. And again, it was a long road. I had to sort of relearn certain things. I had to get back into a bit of dance again, get back into acting again. But yeah, managed to get myself on the West End stage, which has been fantastic. And for the last 10 odd years, I've been on tour and I've been in West End and on Netflix and a little something as well. And there's been loads of lovely experiences from then. But yeah, I couldn't have done one without the other. It's all been a fantastic little melting pot that's kind of enabled me to do and, you know, be lucky enough to do the things I've done so far and hopefully many more to come. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. before it, it's just wonderful to see how we can connect and, mm -hmm. and, and to have this thirst and to find something that just inspires us to want to do more and be more. It's just, and that, 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 that melting pot, as you both have said, has just created such wonderful, inspirational yeah. uh, bands and groups and, and collaborations, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. So, so tell me, how did this friendship evolve? I mean, you two have known each other about 16 years now. Yeah, we like, oh, it's, I mean, our friendship is just everything, really. We met at Vocal Tech. Yes. Same place we've met you as well. And we were kind of shoved together, me and Kel. We weren't, we didn't study in the same group. But yeah. um, I think it was Kim Chandler actually. Yeah, right? it, it, I think it was. Backing vocals for yeah. a tutor band night or something. Yeah, was... for the they used to do um, for the open days for other prospective um, students oh, used to yeah. come in and there'd be open days for them and the tutors would perform, and they'd get students that that were good to do the backing vocals for the teachers and so we were chosen to do backing vocals and me and met, I met Kelly and we began singing together from very early on there and I think we did it probably here and there throughout the whole year of vocal tech doing BVs for tutors and stuff at various events yeah. um, and that's where the friendship started I mean as Kelly said she stayed at BIM in some way and carried on and did her degree <clears throat> And I left at that point, but we have always remained firm friends. Like we said, we both had our little kind of stints of doing our own music. We both did BBs for each other as well yeah. as doing BBs for you. So we kept yeah. ourselves sort of, uh, never mind the friendship, still in a work point of view, we were still very much connected. And honestly, every year we'd just say to each other, it's our year, it's our year, it's next year's our year. We've got to do something ourselves. It's got to happen. Um, and by that point, I was off on tour doing jobs and doing other bits and pieces and then had a small injury and came back quite quickly or mm -hmm. sorry, unexpectedly from a job. And that's when the, I think the idea for us getting together and sort of connecting and trying to do our own thing. And that was the real beginnings of Songbird Sessions. But the friendship has absolutely evolved along the way obviously throughout time friendships obviously do do evolve don't they and 16 years is a long time to know somebody and I don't think Kelly would um mind me saying that I think our friendship within business it's hard to be in in friendship it's like it's like lending somebody that you you know like a family friend money or something there's that awkward I want my money back now. <laughs> um, and in business, you can clash because you know each other, you love each other from a very personal point of view, but now you're trying to put a real professional head, hat on. And we have, it's taken us years to come to the place we are in now in order to be able to balance that friendship element with our business work. Um, and I think our company's evolved because we've evolved, you know, we've both been on our own personal journeys, obviously in life, with our private lives, we've both been on therapy journeys. And I think a lot of that stuff really informs 
our friendship and makes us, I think, the strong unit that we absolutely are, right, Kel? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think I think you have to be able, it has to be a clear vessel mm. um, in order to in order to juggle working for with one another and, and being able to still be honest and true to each other as friends, but to be able to be really forthright and to be able to exercise our thoughts and our opinions, which will inevitably differ. Mm -hmm. It has to be a clear vessel. And I think I think that has been something that's our friendship is one I cherish the most because I don't have to filter things. I don't have to not say things. I don't have to not think things because I feel bad for thinking them. It's with Gemma and I, and I think like Gemma says, through our own personal journeys have been really able to forge such a fantastic relationship where we can, I, I, Gemma can hold me and I can hold her back in the same way, even with the uncomfortable stuff. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's really powerful. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's um, yeah. Yeah. So you talk, you've both spoken briefly about like therapy journeys. What has that been like, you know, in terms of that? Gosh, I mean, it's been everything, Gemma, hasn't it? I yeah. mean, Gemma very much paved the way for me in terms of accessing a talking therapy because Gemma, Gemma did it first and, and I held her as somebody that I, I kind of admired. I admired her strength for doing it. And I think I had that classic therapy is taboo. You, if you go to therapy, you're weak. I had all of those very inaccurate perceptions of what talking therapy was as did and I can, we, can we just say with me. <laughs> if I go to therapy there's something wrong with me I can't ever tell anyone that I've mm. gone to therapy because oh my good they'll think that you know what would they think you know I had all of these yeah. it was such an unspoken um uncelebrated yeah. supportive tool and then there was Gemma sharing it with me firsthand and yeah, I mean, I don't know if you want to say more about that, Jim. Well, I think I think me, like Kelly says, it was the same for me. I not that I, I wanted to go, obviously, but I would be ugh, all sorts of like how I'm having my hand here. I was had so many emotions about going, and they weren't healthy or they were like positive ones mm -hmm. every week. And I think that's where Kelly was helpful for me because I was being just so real with her, saying, "I don't like this. I don't want to go. I'm here." prepping what I'm going to talk about before I go into the room mm -hmm. and you know I think me being so open about you know that this wasn't easy either like, it wasn't like I was walking in there going yeah I'm ready for this I'm open and this is such an easy experience for me to go through yeah. it wasn't and I think that has probably been the very thing that has allowed Kelly to go okay I'm, I can do this and actually feeling like, like I need to and want to do it but yet still also feeling that this is really hard and I also don't want to go this week that's yeah. really quite normal yeah. and yeah like Kel said we've we've really held each other's hands through this process because I don't know that I knew anybody beforehand that's done it and Kelly you're probably the same we yeah. really connect with our sort of family our extended family as well and have feel like our mums are quite similar um and so there's so many like sort of other connections that are outside of our work that we just we do connect on that kind of personal level and are able to go yeah that's my life as well like <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the, that's the thing isn't it like you go to therapy and it was I, I initially accessed therapy from a um it was my GP that had suggested it to me it sort of planted the seed and thought that it would help me I suffer with um I have a condition called ankylosing spondylitis and it's a type of rheumatoid arthritis okay. and um my GP thought it would be useful for me to perhaps talk about that a little bit more so that I could come to terms with it. And I'd kind of parked it and I was like, oh, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. And and like you say, it, it was through through Gemma going, it enabled me to actually get the leaflet out and go, hang on a minute, maybe I can do this. And thank goodness I did, because I, I don't know if I could have met Gemma where she was today mm -hmm. had I not have done my own work and 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 through therapy you do you uncover themes and these themes exist in your personal life but they exist in your work yeah. and they're they're the blocks in your work as much yeah. as they're the blocks in your personal life and yeah. and I genuinely don't think I could be the the professional I am now mm -hmm. having not done sort of interrogated myself in the way that I have and to have, to have done that alongside gems and for us to uncover similar themes mm -hmm. it's just it's fueled a lot of our choices in business and yeah yeah it's all, I think, I love, yeah 
I really couldn't um, agree with both of you more. I mean, I have been in therapy, gosh, like the last you know 20 years of my life. I've always mm. been in therapy. And, um, and if I'm not in therapy now, I'm in a coach. I'm with a coach. Um, and it's why I became a coach, because like what you say, you, you get access to yourself that of to things that you would never, ever, ever have experienced. And as artists, how can we tell the stories of the characters we play or, the, or get really in touch with the meanings of the words if we don't actually know what's going on in ourselves and what's blocking ourselves access to then meet the audience yeah. And you know, even as a coach, I always say we can only bring people as far as we're willing to go. Mm-hmm. So and, true, you know, and it's so such a beautiful. And it, I, I just, I really celebrate you both for taking that therapy therapeutic journey. I've just got to say, Ruthie Hell says hello. Kimberly says hello. Ah, says hello. And jo- Jody Hulse says this. Oh. Is awesome. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. you know, and if you do have any questions for Kelly or Gemma, please, please, please put them in the chat and they will answer them definitely if they can. Um, but yeah, so lovely, lovely, lovely ladies. The reality of living a creative life, our evolution. I mean, what would you like to say about that? I think it's so interesting when we when Gemma and I were talking about coming on and sharing with you today, we we yeah. sort of spoke for a while, Gems, didn't we? And yeah. And I think it is, there's something in the journey of um, get, getting Songbird Sessions to where it is today and getting ourselves to where we are today yeah. that I think is really important to talk about, especially in a world where our perspectives exist online. Do you know what I mean? So you go on our Instagram pages and you see a nice picture of me and Gemma. You see a video shoot of our company and us all in, you know, like I was only saying the other day, gems our video shoot I don't know who I was talking to it might have been Ruthie I was talking to on the phone Mm. and I was saying I look back on those videos and you just see us having the loveliest day but actually in truth I was in massive amounts of pain I Gemma was undoing my shoes in between takes there was a chair on the side of the set that I was going to sit on Gemma was coming back doing my shoes back up for me so that I could go and stand for the next two minutes to sing and look like you know like fab in this video and and I think I I feel so compelled to just to show people the grit Mm. and the workings of Mm. who we are because I feel like we've arrived at a place where we're whacking filters on left right and center in every aspect of our lives Mm. and you're not seeing the true person anymore you know you're Mm. not seeing the pain you're not and then how can you be alongside somebody's pain if you can't be alongside your own yeah mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and i think both gems and i just wanted to get on here today and talk about i guess the yeah the the the, the bits that people actually don't want to pr- potentially show or share and yeah. in the hope that it will just free everyone up to be a little bit more authentic and mm. honest and real yeah, I think we've come to a point in our relationship, well, with Songbirds as well. Yeah. I mean, Songbirds has been through an, an evolution itself. We begun Songbirds with a third member, mm-hmm. um, a friend of ours, and we had very different intentions, I think, starting it out than we have now. And, you know, abs- 100%, it was a massive loss to have lost our friends in business. Um, myself and Kelly had to reset. She would have had to have reset as well and said, well, what's she doing instead? I mean, that had real, that had a real, that, that knocked us all, I think, from a very personal point of view. I think, again, when you're working in business with friends, yeah. if somebody now comes out or someone doesn't do that, have their end of the bargain, as it were, then you're going, what do we do now? How do we save that friendship? And our friendship with this person is different now. There's a friendship there, but it's, it's different. Yeah. Um, which is something, again, we've all had to come to terms with in our own different ways. Yeah. But from a business point of view as well, we have, you know, it has changed, it has ebbed, it has flowed. Yeah. And I think at the beginning, we were really hard on ourselves for, for it changing. It was a case of, God, we should know what we're doing from the very beginning. I think when you're quite a high achiever yeah. and that you, you know, you have goals in your life and they're quite clear, like Hell said, you've got quite a tunnel vision about them. Yeah. When we were suddenly in a pool of we're trying to create something new and fresh and our own, I suppose you, you go the same. You think, well, I should know what I'm doing. I've got lots of experiences in other ways. I should know what I'm doing. 
and for a lot of them early stages you know, the early early years we didn't yeah and so i think when we lost um our friend it was a case of right we we do need to redefine and we absolutely did i think we both sort of really hugged each other then that little bit more we got rid of so songbird sessions is basically kind of three tiers we offer vocal services yeah. we do wedding entertainment but even there we do just acoustic and even that was a change from before it was we do everything we do evening band we do the whole what we do the whole shebang yeah. we decided then at that point we don't really want to do the evening stuff both of us in our personal lives it was like We've done years of functioning, being getting home at one, two o'clock in the morning, driving miles across. Not that we don't do that stuff now, but for our own business, yeah. we were like, that's not what we're about, what we want to do anymore. So yeah. we got rid of it. You know, we downsize, yeah. we do acoustic, like Kel says, arrangement and the sound. And it's so important for us to create something that is part of us that we have created together or separately that we've created even with the girls that we work with. Yeah. And that actually our client is hearing that, you know, like for us, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Getting that life, that love from. Yeah. And sometimes with a full band, when you're, you know, just over the music and you, you're not hearing all of that lovely intricacies that are going into that vocal that you've spent, you know, hours prepping for. So for us, just musically doing acoustic stuff, well, it's just one or two musicians was just our, that was perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to be doing. Um, right, um, two seconds. I'm going to close my window because they've just started mowing the lawn. One sec. <laughs> so, so for Gemma, I hear what if I'm right in what you're saying, you, you, you and Kelly came to a place where you kind of were, you focused down on the bits that you really loved. And I loved what you're talking about. You, you know, being somebody I call it high performance. Mm. I'm a real high performer as well. Yeah. So in order to be really great and to master the things that you're great, you're great at, you have to focus on what you do well. So it sounds like that that's what you had to yeah, do. Yeah, 100%. I think really using nice. the fact that Kel was then, like she said, doing so much more choir work and was just creating these beautiful arrangements yeah. that were that choir was obviously using inside an institution that only they were hearing, or maybe a few outsiders. Yeah. Then it was like, well, no, let's bring them to our audience. Let's take them to clients. Like, to yeah. actually, it's a, it's a travesty that this work that we're creating, nobody is hearing, you know. And since then, again, it started from kind of doing it with her family. Kelly arranged one of her first arrangements for her brother's wedding. We did an arrangement for my sister's wedding. These things were just literally created in love yeah. for like our nearest and dearest. And it's just grown from there. Yeah. So that's been an evolution, I think. Songbird Sessions, and it continues to be. But I, I feel like since maybe 2017, Kel, when we kind of relaunched, we're much more focused on 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 yeah. what we what we offer yeah. um and who we work with there's so many more things that we're just a bit more focused and just know yeah. we know what we want to achieve we know what we want to what our goal is on this but that has taken you know years and of time yeah, yeah and time and i, I think as well point. we've 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 had our own individual like jim has had a theater career yeah. i really got into vocal coaching it was i think it was always Teaching was always on the agenda for me. There was something I, I found really exciting about inspiring somebody to fall in love with singing the way that I fell in love with it or for them to reconnect in, with singing. And I think as Songbird Sessions was evolving, I was on the ground working. I went back to work at what now is BIM London. Yeah. Um, and I was, I'm just meeting these young kids that are like insane. And I, I wanted to do for them, I guess, what was done for, for me and offer them a foot in. And, and it enabled, I think, my coaching work definitely enabled us to kind of evolve our little t team of singers in lots of ways. And some of the girls, well, all of the girls I've taught in some capacity that work with us. Um, and yeah, they're, yeah. they're amazing women and they deserved... A, a platform into the industry in the same way as Gemma and I did back in the day. So I think mm -hmm. it's, but I think as always for us, it always comes back to moral. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we, that's what we always return to gems, doesn't it? With every, everything with, with the way that we run our business, yeah. with the people that we work with, yeah. particularly in our industry, which actually can be a bit cutthroat and it can be a bit, yeah. you know, sharp and painful yeah. at times because everyone's hustling for the, themselves yeah. Yeah. and that, that perhaps they're not fully aligned with 
their moral values in the process. And I was like, I never want to be that. I never yeah, want to do I, that. I, I, I'm I, not going to, excuse yeah. me, but I'm not going to whore myself out yeah, yeah, for a yeah. good job and a no. big gig. No, I'm do gonna, that. I allow the job. Take. I don't want the job. I'd rather yeah, say. Ke Kelly, I always say, if it's not for me, I really don't want it. It's okay. Yeah. If what was what's for me won't pass me. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> and I think but it is, but it's but at the same time, I think, ladies, again, you have to. It's it's hard to do that, especially in an industry like ours, where yeah. the work feels like you know it's hard to come by, and that people are you know, they're hungry for it. They've studied for years for it. And when you come out, you're just like, I want it. I want to do it. And also, as we all feel that it's a vocation of some kind, you know, the need is so strong to be doing what you're doing in order, like it does, I think, take some time, doesn't it? And like, like we're saying, to get to know yourself well enough to say, I do want this, but not at the expense of this, this Absolutely. and this. Absolutely. And that's that realignment is that moral that you're talking about. I just want to say, Kerry's saying, hi, guys. Hi, is greetings. Michael Karcher is saying clap. Kimberly oh, is saying mm -hmm. you ladies are so amazing. Your positivity and determination inspires me so much on my journey. Oh, and Holy is saying amen indeed. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it, it is really, I mean, it's, if, if it's, if it, you know, I, you know, I've been able to do these sessions because, you know, this is the kind of friend circle that I operate in people who are always thinking from intention mm. from that space of yes I want to serve but I don't want to serve by stepping on someone that's right having no. a vibe because actually my creativity won't be right inside that pocket mm -hmm. and I think as a business you've become successful because you've kept that I mean Kelly you've been on you work with people from X Factor you know yeah. Emma, yeah. You, you're you're also on West End stages, you know, yeah. doing a curious dog on the incident. You know, like you've done so many amazing things, you know, because you've yeah. kept that integrity, I call it as well. Yeah. And and this is why as well, like with Songbirds, we, obviously we've got our wedding portion of our company, but we've also now and, and our newest venture with it is um corporate choirs for business. And this is and this was very much come from, I think, again, evolution in the sense that um Kel starting her degree uh, sorry her master's in music therapy and us kind of coming to a point where we wanted to like you're saying Nadine serve in some way yeah. you know the power of singing for both of us is so 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 strong for all of us is so strong and we really loved the idea of trying to just bring that to the non-singer so yeah. we now provide and our newest service is providing corporate choir, well, well-being choirs in London businesses. So we go into companies and do, you know, uplifting well-being choirs for, I mean, for people that generally are connecting over probably an alcoholic beverage in the pub as, <laughs> as, as their connection, you know, in business. You do, you think of city life, they're working hard, they're playing yeah. hard, but that means... Yeah going to the pub and getting drunk for a lot of people i so was this, i was in that life you know it though it's, that's the so reality right? <laughs> <laughs> i went out so i've been working in a, a company running a corporate choir for a few years and i went out for like i'm not a big drinker i like a drink on the weekends yeah. but i went out to the pub with a few of them in the early days of working and asked for an archers and lemonade and they were like archers and lemonade <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I definitely, I'm definitely not, not this. Corporate. Like, yeah, it was just really yeah. fun. Mm. But yeah, that's that's our new, that's the thing that we, you know, this, well, before, you know, this lockdown and everything that's happened this year, this was our focus for the year. Because I think, you know, us being able to sort of give back in another way and just be in spaces now where people, you know, they are feeling nervous. They're vulnerable in another way because they're not singers, you know, they're not professionals. And it's totally different to working with the professionals. You know, you're dealing with a whole nother set of, of, of things that they're de with, de with dealing with, you know. But it's a, such a nice place to be, isn't it, Kel, to be with yeah. like, and hold their hand and actually go, you did it after. You, you didn't think you could, but half an hour later and they've come out feeling just amazing. And all the worries are, you know, they're not there for them for that half an hour. And they've come up, their cup is full for that half an hour. So we just want to now spread that joy of singing to you know the every man as it were yeah. that's got that little creative thing in them that 
they they maybe didn't want to necessarily pursue, but they they still love music and they like to sing, but it's just done in their shower. So. And boy, can you two sing like? <laughs> <Hello>! <laughs> but I think do you know what? I think that's the myth, and that's the really difficult thing with singing is that it, people think they can't do it, yeah. and that's uh, one of the most protective factors against that fear is to be with other people Absolutely. and I think that's what I was seeing I work um one day a week I work at Kent University and they have a choir but they open it to the community so this was where it, this was where I was really starting to see on the ground the how how accessible singing could be so mm. you I would be you'd be mixing music degree and master students with people from the community and in my brain, I, I, I was like, how, how am I going to manage this skill set or this, this, you know, I'm going to be working with people with no experience singing and how am I going to satisfy all of these appetites? Mm. And it was, it was amazing to watch. It doesn't matter, essentially. Your ability to sing doesn't matter when there's a group of you because something happens between the group sound that just pulls everyone where they need to be. Yeah. And, and more importantly, I was, you know, people were coming in saying, you know, I, I suffer with depression and I don't leave the house, but I come to your choir once a week. And I was, yeah. I was starting to see these themes in my work in education, but also in my work as a vocal coach that, hang on a minute, this is, this is, really powerful from a mental health point of view what what i'm offering here is is way more than us just mm -hmm. singing together it's it's change it's mobilizing people in their lives mm -hmm. to, to be able to do things that that they're really unable to do in in other circumstances and i think that that was so i think the love the, the interest of music therapy for me has always been there but i think after having sort of 10 years out working and starting to uncover all of these themes in the work I was like right I have to I have to I have to go and do that masters and I have mm. to qualify as a music therapist because it's going to enable me to yeah. just just open that up even more and, and for us to be able to offer that now as a service yeah. for songbird sessions is so exciting and yeah. it's it, it, like Gemma says it's, it changes people and it changes people's relationships yeah. because you 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 get rid of the hierarchy in business you've got you've got the you know the the director of the company with the administrator and they're on the same harmony part together sharing lyric sheets and yeah. none of that shit matters yeah. at that moment. Exactly. exactly you know we was just saying wonderful idea um singing mm -hmm. and well-being perfect combination and yeah absolutely and it's also the spiritual connection that mm -hmm. that also has with people mm -hmm. and it gives them access to a part of their hearts that they would never kind of interact with or show yeah, sure. other than when they're singing you know and yeah. I think that's that's a really wonderful gift to be able to give anybody yeah absolutely. Absolutely. absolutely and I think just on a slightly deeper level this is another area that I'm really interested in I want to write about it for my research methods for my music therapy but there is there's something in the the blocks that we have emotionally as people that 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 are, are more are mobilized more easily yeah. when we sing absolutely so yeah. perhaps perhaps if I can't do tears very well or I can't do anger very well for example in my personal life but there's something about being able to mobilize that through music yeah. and that's the stuff that's really powerful because yeah, exactly. all, of, all of the stuff that's getting stuck yeah um suddenly you're in a session and you're seeing and, and, and you see it and, you know you it's mm -hmm. lovely that, that's why music and opera is so and so is so important because it gives people access to those feelings that they feel that they're not allowed to have on a day-to-day -day basis on day-to-day -day. yeah yeah, so, yeah. i hear that and i think as well just connection wise i hear that i feel like i am a better performer since one I think the therapy journey and also I think becoming a, a parent as well becoming a mum um I feel like there's been so many blocks for me that have just been broken down in this last few years of being a mum of of I think getting out of just myself I suppose and focusing on somebody else and I feel like between that and therapy I know myself on a much deeper level and that does again it has no choice but to go into the work that I am doing 
Um, and I think evolution again there, isn't there? There's evolution for me, I think, as an actress going, oh, I don't want to do those jobs. Uh, yeah, this, this is not right for me for whatever, for whatever reason, where once upon a time it was like, no, give me the more, I will do whatever you were saying. Oh, I'm, I'm just telling you, oh, I'm the there. word no the is the no. strongest, oh. yeah. Like, no. as, especially anybody that's self-employed will yeah. know how difficult it is. Yeah. There is a drive to, to somebody that's self-employed that, I mean, maybe this is quite controversial, but I really believe when you're self-employed, you constantly work on the premise that it could all disappear. Yes, people do. People and do. that that is, it, it's a powerful motivator, but also it's, it's really debilitating because yeah. to then try and have boundaries and integrity... That's where you can get, you can become really unstuck. And I think the, yeah. one, the one thing that Gemma and I have discovered in, in terms of refining our business is learning to say no. Yeah. No, we can't sing at your wedding for four hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. We can't do that because then we're doing a disservice to the people that work with us, and we can't pay them. Or no, actually, I'm not going to do that job anymore because it's compromising my integrity and, mm -hmm. and I don't or my want to health do that. Or, or, yeah. my health or yeah. and you know we've had to support each other. I think in lots of ways to to say no and yeah. that's okay yeah. yeah and you know when I always say and because Martina Arroyo has been one of my mentors for many years and she always said to me the most biggest thing that you'll ever have to start learning to say is no mm. uh, in my therapeutic work as a coach what I also say to my clients now is when you say no to the things that you don't want to do you're saying yes to yourself yeah yes yes and yes. that honor that honoring gives you back your integrity which means then you will attract the right work to you which means you won't run out of jobs because it just yeah. doesn't happen because you're running in your right axis you're running in your mm. right axis. and then you don't have this anxiety and this panic you know and also it's what you guys were talking about as well when you're surrounding yourself with the people that resonate at that level anyway yeah. No, you tend to draw that to you also. You know, hundred percent. I think for right is saying. I think it was just. Uh, Remo. Oh, I we've lost. Sorry, that. Gemma. We lost you. I think we just lost. Who have we just lost? Who have we just lost? I've, I'm here. I think I'm here we've as well. We've got you. I've got you, Kelly. Have you got yeah. me? Got you, Kelly. We lost Gemma. Gemma. Hello. Nadine, I think it's you, doll. You've sort of frozen. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. You're back. Okay, okay, cool. Yes. Back. <laughs> so can we move on to then your tips? Mm -hmm. You've both got two tips to each, haven't you? So let's let let's uh, talk about those about singing and relationships. Lovely. And yeah. Okay. I think I'll start you start. <laughs> oh yeah, go on, you start, Jen. <laughs> Okay, so I think my two, we had a little talk again, me and Kelly, about these last night, but um, my two top tips and are, the first is to have a good community around you. Um, we've, we've, we've spoken a little bit about this already, but the people that you choose to have around you are so important. Um, like we said, you could, you're in this industry, in the lion pit, you're working with loads of different people all the time and not everybody has your best intentions at heart necessarily. But I think you finding your people is really important. We do that with Songbird Sessions. We're really picky with the, the people that we work with um, because to create that music, like you said, everybody kind of needs to be vibrating on the same kind of level to, to create the best work possible. Um, so networking is really important to us, but not just, just mindlessly, you know, looking for connections with people. It is just really trying to find that right connection. Like, again, just shouting out a company that we work with that does our sound, yeah. Interest Hire, they're fantastic. Actually, Laurie's here, it's her husband that runs the company. Um, it's important for us to work with people that we know and love, because, we, again, we know that we are on the same wavelength we know that we're not going to be let down to them because we know them on that level that we know right you know what we're trying to do here for our business vice versa we know what you're doing so therefore it just all it just all comes together so my top that would be my first tip have a good well, community Gemma, around I just, you. Gemma I totally agree with that I run mm -hmm. a, an opera company called Everybody Can mm -hmm. and like you I don't work with or have anybody in that team that doesn't resonate on a really high frequency 
because it's got to be about people working together in a loving way so we value yeah. to, to each other so when the audience walks into the room they're already walking into a space of love and high frequency creativity um so if somebody's like a gothic i don't want them anywhere near me mm -hmm. i don't want to resonate at that frequency yeah if it's not conducive that's right great work the what you're trying to create yeah. them yeah. and so then my second one would be to up your skill set um again sort of being self-employed you know and i think this this resonates with me massively being in theater that you know jobs are not forever you know if you find a job in theater that's forever you, you're doing well and i mean if, there are some obviously I, I when i did lion king i was there for three years yeah. um i could have stayed for a long time that show's been there 20 years we've just yeah. celebrated actually yeah. so a lot of jobs are for a short amount of time and i think downtime is something that you have to get used to or, or work or time outside of doing what it is you're really trying to do so i mean if you have got skills that you know that are still within your within the creative your creative heart and what you want to do creatively then that's fantastic you know if you can play an instrument if you teach things that are just going to inform you as an artist yeah. to me that's yeah. that's that's the way that I've chosen to try and lead my life so that if I'm not doing theatre work which I love to do and still have very many goals I'd like to achieve with yeah. if I'm not doing that then what I'm doing in my downtime or outside of that yeah. is still informing my creative you know my creative spirit and what I want to do I yeah. think it, yeah I mean it not doesn't necessarily work for everybody some people like to kind of come out and just do kind of a bit job that they can but for me that's quite stress inducing yeah, right. um trying to find work and then again then again my daytime i don't kind of want to live my life where i'm feeling like i'm wishing the days away either so if i was doing an office job yeah. just pushing paper for three months until this next job comes out to me that's a real waste of of my time really and i could be doing that i could be in a classroom being a peri teacher which i've done a, a, again for a long time alongside doing my acting work I'm doing that, I'm teaching kids, I'm infusing yeah. them if they want to have a career in performing arts. We're, we're working with them at such a young age to try and get them excited about doing something that's artistic. So that would be my second tip to have to mm -hmm. up your skill set and that kind of growth and education are forever. Yeah, yeah, Gemma, I really agree. You know, as a coach, as a high performance coach, one of the biggest skills that we believe is about upskilling. And so you're completely right, because we all have a Leonardo da Vinci inside of us. We have yeah. so many skills mm -hmm. and we can use them whenever they're appropriate. Like, you know, for instance, I songwrite, I compose, I coach, like, you're, you know, like I'm always doing something different. So I'm not kind of saying I'm never bored. Mm. I'm always inside my creativity. And that's what an artist is, someone who's also in, always inside their creativity. I'm just going to see Laurie here. Laurie say, saying, which is why it's so painful in this current climate, having the government diminish the self-employed with their inequalities in terms of support for their PAYE workers. The hard work mm -hmm. and graph that goes into living the creative life, feeling like it's always on the line, is something you can only understand if you've lived it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, hundred percent. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, it's scary. It's it's, yeah. it's a little bit. It's a bit nerve wracking. I think again with theatre, I'm every day looking at like papers, the, the like the stage and stuff, and seeing how you know very possibly theatres you know some theatres are just not going to make it through this time they're not going to make it through unless the government literally puts their hands in the pocket and helps them through this time so it's a it's quite a nerve-wracking time actually for my industry with theatre as yeah. to what it's going to look like after because literally yeah. just from a financial point of view yeah. they can't survive socially distancing they can't open theatres and only have half a house yeah. half an audience yeah. in there it's not viable and the it's other a, thing is also to get excited about the new possibilities that could also get out of mm -hmm. get out of the other side of it as well. And yeah. so also carry, encouraging us to do as artists because sometimes we're not in control of what yeah what, we're not what, of what things right. happen or mm -hmm. how things will evolve. So to keep our mindsets, mm -hmm. keep our creativity. Yes, yeah. we can pay attention and do what we can to support that. Send letters do yeah. what we can do to do that but also oh. to make sure we are creating in our own minds yeah. a mindset that is that 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 taps into 
what we're able to do, what we're in yeah. control of. That's really, 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 really important. Yeah, that is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Kelly, yes, please give me your two tips. So I think introspection is my first one. It's a lot of what we've spoken about today, I guess, but that everything starts with you. Yeah. And the first place you need to look is within you. Yeah. And in order to get your creative flow in whatever way, whether that's your work, whether that's, you know, taking up sort of things in your personal life that are going to fill your cup or, you know, you know, maintaining, being a good friend, a good, you know, all of those things. I think it, everything, it starts with you and you have to, you have to get to know yourself and you have to face up to some of the bits that, that need, that, that, need work essentially or that need acceptance on some level yeah. um i think we're all too quick to kind of look at other people like, this isn't working because of you and because of you and because of, and you're like hang on a minute what about me mm -hmm. what am i bringing what am i and and for me i have to have such a free like in in the in order for me as a vocal coach to be able to work with somebody else i can't have anything get in the way yeah. Of any any of my blocks get in the way because my defense will just meet their defense and then we'll just yeah. offer up for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Who's got time for that? And I yeah. But I I've only realized that as I've done my own work. So I think I think I just would encourage everyone to go to therapy, man. Yeah. Really get <laughs> book yourself a session and get to know yourself and sit in the discomfort of it because as Gemma says, it's sweaty and it's not nice for everybody you know but there's 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 mm. nothing worth anything is easy to yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um but it's also, it comes back to that quote as well kelly you know keep your side of the street clean yes mm. <laughs> <laughs> right and and i i think side of the street clean. you're not looking at anybody else inside of the street yeah <laughs> yeah it's so true it's so true yeah. and like, Gemma and i've said time and time again sometimes when you grow some people grow with you and some people don't and don't. that's that's yeah. difficult you know? yeah. yeah um but i think what, lastly just really simple but should never be overlooked work ethic yeah. I think even some of the most high profile work that I've done works on the same foundations as any other job. It's you need to rock up on time. You need to be generous yeah. and, and warm and, and be bringing something into a room that's going to mobilize it, not paralyze it. You need to know your shit yeah. and don't blame other people for not knowing your shit. Like mm -hmm. yeah. you need to like, I think I think just general basic work ethic is the difference between getting rebooked on a job or not getting rebooked on a job. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, all industries, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Be a good colleague, be a good person. You know, be kind, be generous. You know, if you've got something that you're not happy about, do it in private with the person mm -hmm. that you're actually with, not to everybody else. Mm -hmm you know but also be heard like that's the one yeah. thing the bigger the bigger the organization the, the sometimes the louder you need to speak and it, that shouldn't be the case but yeah. but do speak up do yeah. do share do be innovative do yeah. do think laterally like like yeah. you're saying in a climate that we're all living in now you know don't don't be afraid to break the mold and think yeah. differently yeah. and and speak up and be heard because yeah. and it's, that's not easy in a big organization yeah. No, you know, not. and Anna's a woman as well. Like, you yes, know, it's, it's why I'm saying, Kelly, some of those conversations, you know, I know from watching, I come from a corporate world, you know, but I was in merchant banking for such a long time. So, one of the things that, and the ways that I know that conversations to be had is to do them quietly, mm. is to ask for those meetings one to one, mm. you know, sometimes shouting loudest does not get you heard at all mm. it shuts everyone down mm. so you know be comfortable with uh, requesting time for yourself to be heard yeah you know, one to one level and and maybe even just to finish that off it's more than being heard it's being seen and i know yeah. that that for me is yeah i've spent the last sort of few years de-armoring yeah. and and arriving at a place where i could just possibly be enough as i am yeah mm -hmm. And I think, I think that to, I think yeah, if that's a that, that's a wonderful place to to be. Absolutely, visibility. 
yeah that visibility as yeah. women as well like it's so, that's some sometimes hard for people to hard for women to, to, mm -hmm. to have that visibility yeah. absolutely yeah. which is again i think why we begin with somber sessions quite it sort of happened sort of in a not necessarily a really pointed way but we're so happy it did that we focus we're just females and that was yeah. actually like no we want this we want to empower some young women you know we feel empowered working together as women we literally on our socials we're so much about just trying to push women in business as well and being out there and being visible as two women running a company um, and working with women we got our when we did our videos and done our promos we used a woman um videographer that we love and have used yeah. since then as well but it's yeah for us all about the females and empowering yeah shout out to hannah actually uh, to videographer hannah, yeah. she's done loads for us so and jackie, all of our songs jackie antoine is just saying i like that keep the side of the street clean yeah. Anne marie is saying hey ladies Anne marie is saying you are all enough yeah. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. So rude. sending you mm. that love and light oh my gosh Gemma, Kelly, it's been so wonderful to have this really open, warm conversation about our industry, about creating, about evolution and evolving mm -hmm. as artists, as women, as creators, you know. It's just been so lovely. And um, Teresa is saying yes, and Chiki is saying for some people, their only opportunity is being heard first in order to have the chance to be seen. Keep mm. up. Work. Thank you, yeah, Chi Chi. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. If you don't know who Chi Chi is, Chi Chi is um, such a wonderful cellist, and she is also a founder, the founder of the orchestra Chinike. Amazing. Um, I'm having her on here next week because oh, I just love what she's doing as a woman is really, really, really important. And um, they, she has made outstanding mm. um, creations and involvement with that orchestra, which Fantastic. is fantastic. Wow, yeah, just fantastic. So tomorrow, oh no, Monday. Oh my God, we're at the weekend. Friday. <laughs> you know, so as I say on the weekends, everybody, please, 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 please schedule your time. Make a plan for your weekend. It doesn't matter if you're going to sleep all weekend or watch Netflix all weekend. Make time for exercise. Make time to be with the family when you're going to cook. Because when you plan your time, you empower yourself with your own choices. And then you don't feel like you get into a low level of depression. You don't feel like you're wasting time. Have that time. Empower yourself. Make conscious choices for yourself that will make sure you have a wondrous and fantastic weekend. On Monday, we're going to be joined by Laurie Lixenberg, who is a, a mezzo-soprano and also a wonderful creator and innovator. So it's going to be wonderful to talk to her on Monday morning. And we've got Laurie saying, such brilliant energy to start our days with, ladies. Thank you for sharing your experience and for inspiring us. Or Lena Christmas says, what a wonderful way to start my day listening to you three. Thank you. Stay well and stay safe. So, ladies, before we leave, do you have any final thoughts? Any Oh, I've got a final thought. Thank you, Nadine. Mm. Let's just, I think, acknowledge you. And your, Gemma and I said this last night to one another after we spoke with you, that you are unlike anyone I've ever met and, and Gemma has ever met. Your energy, your ability to just, just go and go with your whole heart into everything that you do and to have watched you evolve in the time that we've known you is so and it continues yeah. to be inspiring so mm -hmm. thank you for being you, the, the pioneer in many ways you know mm -hmm. getting there you know and showing us all that this is what it's like come on yeah oh, oh, that's so amazing Kelly. That's, i don't know what to say i've just you know what i'm just gonna i can feel like myself being really moved by that so i'm just gonna feel it yeah and I'm please do love. And just Please say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It's that such a beautiful thing to say, and I'm receiving it with all of my heart. Yeah. Amen. Gemma, did you want? Was there anything you? I think just finally, I think I suppose for everybody there out there, just like stand in your power, I suppose, and believe in yourself. There's going to be lots of you know in this creative life times when you feel like you're not good enough. Yeah. and that you second guess yourself and things in your personal life change so therefore you feel like your work life has to change and I think just believing 
continuing to work hard and standing in your power is the way to live a creative life and also that it's about the journey not not the ending isn't it that we hear all the yeah. time it is and that journey is allowed to change and it's supposed to change and it's supposed to grow it's supposed to ebb and flow that's what's supposed to be happening so as much as sometimes that's uncomfortable that's where we really make that fantastic work i think and make good choices Gemma and kelly you are fearless mm -hmm. women like the day i met you those many years ago like when i've seen mm -hmm. you um when somebody said, you know, can we just sing this tune? You were like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mellifluous, if that's the right word. They're florid, they move. You can sing anything. You're engaging, you're powerful, you're alive, you're anointed. You, you come to everything with energy. And I just find you to the most incredibly positive energy and so when anything you sing you make the whole room come alive anyone you touch you light up cameras you light up stages and i'm not surprised that you're in together and you are such um, a great uh, portrayal of leadership and what it's like to and, and what it's like to see women in business strong powerful leadership women in business thank you so much thank oh, you so much. you're so welcome honest conversation with with each and every one of us today and we appreciate you so much thank you so much thanks everybody. for having us thanks guys thank you for, 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 for what was a longer session I, thank you for your patience everybody and michael karcher young is saying love this thank you and susan saying had a phone call we'll have to listen on record that's all right thank you ladies so please everybody take care thank you so much and i will Bye, see you guys. on the safe over the weekend Bye. Bye -bye.